Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the community. Well, hi, I'm Rebecca Jansen, and I have lived in Seattle for 25 years. I moved from Florida after um, being a counselor for the deaf and hard of hearing in, in, at DVR uh, in Tampa. And uh, I started in Jacksonville, Florida, which is where I'm originally from. And uh, my friends from college lived in Tampa. So there was a counselor for the deaf opening uh, job opening that came about and in Tampa where all my friends were. And so I talked to the deaf and hard of hearing specialists at DVR at, in Jacksonville and they were like, go for it. We know who your mm -hmm. boss is going to be. Give it a shot. So I did not know a lick of sign language other than maybe spaghetti and the ABCs and I love you. Right. And, um, and so I just immersed myself in deaf culture and deaf awareness. Um, in deaf church, uh, but I'm Jewish, um, uh, and uh, went to silent meals at the mall and worked with interpreters one-to-one. -one. And so I was to become conversational within a year and did that. Um, I also then visited, um, at the time it was Western Oregon State College, and they had an incredible rehabilitation program. So studied there for a short time. And then some friends from the University of Florida, uh, who were my good friends and neighbors, uh, came to Seattle and were going to get their PhD at University of Washington. And so when I came up to Seattle driving by myself from Oregon, I was just like, oh my God, I'm in love. Like, I want to live here. So shortly after, uh, I left Tampa and um, moved in some, with some friends at Fremont, and the rest is history in Fremont, uh, Washington. So it was a great neighborhood and a, and a really, really fun time. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been working with people um, in the employment piece of rehabilitation or um, in, with people with disabilities for all these years. It's my 25th year at Mainstay. Actually, November will be 26 years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that, that that's awesome. So if I could get into like, you know, um, like my next question here is what has been going on with people with disabilities in terms of like in the employment sector, you know, what has been going on there? Well, it's been really an interesting um, time for people with disabilities in employment. You know, um, I think uh, employers' minds are open more than ever to supported employment, to hiring people with disabilities. I think there's still a lot of fear and stereotypes and um, issues that need to be eradicated. Uh, there's a lot of work to do, and there's so many businesses that can benefit from hiring people with disabilities um, and of all abilities, right? Um, there's so much work to be done. I think one of the primary focuses for um, CRP or vendors, we're called community rehabilitation programs, CRPs is um, funding is is constantly and legislative support has constantly been an issue for us and so um, that holds us back a, a bit from our progress uh, but um, you know mainstay supports people from the mayor's office to various businesses around the city of seattle um, in the city of Seattle and King County uh, to private and public sector. So it's a pretty fun time. And I love working with school to work youth. That is a, a challenge and a thrill at the same time. Mm -hmm. You were, you were jumping into my next question is, which is like, how does sales mainstay like help people with disabilities, students with disabilities find, seek and maintain employment? So Mainstay is the employment piece, and Mainstay has been around since 1985. Um, it started as teaching people to dishwash to perfection, and then they had the honor of a job uh, to dishwash in the community. 
Um, that was kind of state of the art at the time, which it seems uh, incredible to us at this point where people are able to do so much uh, more and um, can have the opportunity to show people. So Mainstay helps people with disabilities to support their employment through a variety of different programs and support, such as job coaching, um, job retention. First, we start with a community-based assessment or an assessment to determine someone's skills and interests. And we really try to focus on what's going to be lifelong, rewarding journey through employment. Like your first job doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be your lifelong job, but about 85% of our clients have been in their jobs 10 years or more. Um, and one of the most thrilling things for me is when someone set, has a great job and it's paying well, and then they say, I'd like to do something else and find something else. That's a huge win for me uh, as an employment specialist. And I feel like once you're a job developer, you're always a job developer. So you're always hustling for jobs and um, trying to find um, great employment uh, for people. Mm -hmm. So sales, sales is the academic part of our program. So Mainstay is a self-sustaining department of Seattle Central College, meaning we pay rent to be at Seattle Central College and we bring in all of our own funds. So um, sales, which is right now on hold because of staffing issues for my own staffing uh, ability, um, is our program where students with learning differences and diversities um, are enrolled at Seattle Central College or the Seattle Colleges for, um, you know, um, class classroom work and can navigate those uh, courses that they're interested in. And then sales provides the um, executive functioning and the interpersonal support that's necessary to be successful in a job. Um, so those are those are the um, programs we have at Seattle Central College. Mm -hmm. My next question is, what tools and strategies do you guys use uh, to help um, Hang on a second. Um, uh, I'm, I want to make sure I'm reading this right. Um, what tools and strategies do you use to help students uh, find, seek, and retain employment? I know I think I might have, I accidentally asked that twice. Well, you know, the first, the first step of finding out what a person wants to do is really spending time with them, talking to them. A lot of times when you're working with a younger student or someone who's never worked before, they have no idea what the world of work is about. So exposing people to opportunities and seeing what's out there, and then you can make a better informed decision on what you want to do for work. Um, and so, you know, spending time with that person, spending time with their family or their network or their chosen family, if you will, friends, to, to find out okay, what's your day-to-day -day, uh, experiences like? Um, I have an, an example of a client who um, I spent, she was in a um, adult family home. I spent two weeks with her, going through her schedule, spending time with her, seeing what she did, what she ate, where they went, what she liked, um, because she had minimal language skills. But every Friday night, her adult family home took her to um, Sam's Club when it was around in Shoreline. And she was the mayor of Sam's Club. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone knew her, the front desk people. And I was like, hot damn, we're getting a job at Sam's Club. Mm -hmm. And it was, and it worked and it was her job for many years. And it was really fun. So that's what you've got to do is hang out with the person, get to know them really well. And, um, and think out of the box. Mm -hmm. uh, my next question, I have a like a follow-up that I'd like to ask. What sorts of uh, stakeholders do you partner with um, in, in your efforts with like finding, seeking and maintaining employment? Like who are like the main people um, in, um, 
in Washington, in your area that, yeah. That is a superb question. Um, so um, we partner with so many different interesting organizations, companies, businesses. So right before this call, I got off of the phone um, with a well-known hospital system. Um, and we are trying to develop jobs there for um, individuals who are working for surgeons and doing sterile processing and instrument technology so that surgeons and doctors can have what they need to do their jobs and work in hospitals effectively. Um, there's something known as Project Search that already has um, uh, students and workers in um, Seattle Children's Hospital, um, and they're supported by a different vendor than Mainstay, but it's all benefiting people with disabilities and work supported workers. So, so we're talking with people from hospitals, and then we're working to develop um, internal programs with big corporations like Amazon, and and um, Amazon then contracts with other programs like CBRE, CBRE. Um, which does their kind of contract work or food service or that kind of stuff. I'm always trying to, again, think out of the box and go to the, the job seekers community to find where do they want to work? What do they like? What are their interests? Um, you know, um, from a, a woman who really enjoyed sewing, we connected her with a job as a seamstress. Um, uh, doing hems and that kind of thing on Queen Anne to to various various types of work. So I'm always looking to partner. So if you've got the hookup, let me know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My next question is, what impact does your work have on the community as a whole? Oh, wow. Well, there's nothing more exciting than getting a person a job, in my opinion. Um, it has an impact on the individual and then this incredible cool ripple effect, right? Because this, the person's working, their family gets the respite and can focus on their own lives. Um, not to say that that individual is taking up all their family time or, or uh, in any way, but just that once you know your child, your son, your daughter, your child is active and busy and doing something, then you can really focus on what you're doing. So it has a ripple effect on the family, the impact um, of someone having a job, they have a contribution, they have a reason to get up in the morning, there's purpose, there's motivation, it's financial, it's um, contributing to your community, it's having fun, it's meeting people. So the impact is, is pretty broad. And then also the employers and the co-workers get this incredible valuable worker. Um, I just see it's a win-win all the way around. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Lastly, my, my last question is, how can we create more equitable opportunities for employment for people with disabilities, both in the short term and in the long term? Because there, there, I bet there's often a struggle. It's constant education. It's constant education. It's you know, we're social workers in a way, right, as people who are doing job development. So, you know, reaching that social media, reaching younger generations, um, exposing people of all different backgrounds to supported employment. And so many people's lives have been touched by people who are working in their community. Um, but, you know, you, you don't necessarily think about it all the time. So, that's what job developers and job coaches are trying to do. They're trying to work themselves out of the job because you want to be invisible behind the scenes. It's the person working who's kind of in the forefront. And so that's what's pretty exciting. Um, the two, am I, did I answer your question really well? Mm -hmm. No, don't, but you hit it on the head, nail on the head. <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's constant education. So like this particular hospital system I just got off the phone with, you know, everybody's got to buy in. 
we I don't want people who I'm working with to be somewhere where they're not wanted and respected. And that's the key. Everybody should have an equal equitable opportunity. And so reaching people, you know, trying to find um, students and uh, job seekers from different backgrounds is key. I like my staff to represent our community and our country. And, and um, you know, these are all the important things about running an agency to help people. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. 